Hi, I'm Brian Bankson from the Cinco Ranch Branch Library, and welcome to episode four of What Makes This Photograph Great, where we analyze point by point, element by element, pixel by pixel, what makes a photograph worth looking at. Today I'm sporting uh, brand new spectacles and unruly hair that hasn't been cut in a year because of this pandemic. So each episode I choose a master photographer and focus on a particular photograph from their repertoire that I really dig. Today we're going to look at American portrait photographer Annie Leibovitz. Let's start with a little background on Miss Leibovitz. She was born in 1949 in Connecticut, the third of six children. Her father was an officer in the U.S. Air Force, and so she took her first photographs when he was stationed in the Philippines during the Vietnam War. Leibovitz uh, attended San Francisco Art Institute with the intention of studying painting. However, she soon changed her major to photography after taking her first photography workshop. Her first job was a staff photographer for Rolling Stone magazine in 1970, and by 1973, she was Rolling Stone's chief photographer, a position she would hold for 10 years. During this time, she would photograph rock icons such as Mick Jagger, Bruce Springsteen, Linda Ronstadt, Cindy Whopper, Fleetwood Mac, Sting, Michael Jackson, and many, many more. Perhaps her most famous photograph is of John Lennon and Yoko Ono, where she convinced John Lennon to pose nude, cuddled up to his fully clothed wife. Tragically, Leibovitz took this photograph just five hours before John Lennon was shot and killed. The photo remains the most famous cover of Ro Rolling Stone magazine to this day. Annie Leibovitz would soon have the reputation as the photographer who convinced celebrities to take their clothes off. The list of celebrities she has photographed in some state of undress is long. David Cassidy, a pregnant Dem Demi Moore, Kira Knightley, Scarlett Johansson, Sting, and a controversial photograph of then 15-year-old Miley Cyrus. Leibovitz was famous for saying that the job of a photographer was not to make the subject comfortable. On the contrary, she often did her best to take her subjects out of their comfort zone and make them feel vulnerable. She considered these kinds of shots the most honest portraits. Leibovitz continues to photograph to this day. Although she has taken thousands of photographs of both men and women, it is perhaps her portraits of strong women that are her uh, strongest photographs. In 1989, she published a photo book called Women that included essays by her longtime partner, art critic Susan Sontag. In the book, she captures strong women of power, like astronaut Eileen Collins, Supreme Court Justices Sandra Day O'Connor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. In 2015, Weibowitz was the principal photographer for the 2006 Pirelli calendar, which had typically featured supermodels. Leibovitz took a drastic shift from the calendar's traditional style by focusing on admirable, admirable women as opposed to sexuality. The calendar included Amy Schumer, Serena Williams, and Patti Smith. So, let's now take a look at the photograph I have chosen to critique. All right, so this is um, this was actually a very difficult decision coming up with a, a photograph uh, to, to choose from um, Annie Leibovitz's vast collection. Uh, um, she has a lot of what I would call iconic photos, uh, well, photos that you've probably seen many times before. Um, now, a lot of these are, uh, you know, going to be celebrity nudes, and we're a family-friendly channel here at the library, so I didn't want to pick any of those. Um, I picked this one for uh, for several reasons. Uh, one, I am just a huge Star Wars nerd, and I will definitely talk about anything Star Wars. Uh, um, but also, um, I think she's carved out a really cool niche for herself recently, because uh, she's done quite a few of these. These are what they call production stills, uh, and they're used, you know, to promote the movie. Uh, um, this was a series that she did um, for this movie. I think the, the movie before that one as well. Um, and she it was for a spread in Vanity Fair, which promoted the new Star Wars movies. Uh, 
and uh, she, um, I think she did one, yeah, she did one recently also for uh, Dennis Villanueva's movie Dune, which should hopefully be coming out in theaters in October if we're back in theaters. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really cool niche for her. I think she, it's something that her style uh, lends itself to uh, very well and creating these kind of beautiful pictures of these uh, you know, really popular sci-fi movies. Um, I, I think are, are really great. Um, and then I also, you know, I picked this one because I wanted to pick one because um, I believe her strongest photographs are the, her her photograph of, of women. Um, and, um, the, you know, this is, uh, you know, one of the first, you know, science fiction franchises that had, uh, you know, a really strong women playing the lead, playing the hero in it. Uh so uh, let's get started uh, with it. First thing I want to talk about is uh, her her writing style, um, which is is very much her signature style, uh, and and this is very much you know representative of her style. Uh, she uses off camera lighting, uh, which will be you know s flashes or strobes that uh, you know are uh, you can standing off camera. Um, but she does it in a very a subtle way because usually when someone's using off-camera lighting, you know, especially outdoors, uh, uh, it's very noticeable and it creates a you know, certain style. This, you know, this is you know very very subtle. Um, so I mean, she picked you know of course an overcast day to shoot so that most of the natural light is very even, very evenly distributed. Yeah, it's always great to take you know photographs in um, in natural you know in overcast natural light. Uh, but you know she added a little bit of extra light. It looks like let me see. It looks like the light's coming from this direction from overhead, but it's very very subtle. Um, you see that the, the the you know this side of her face you know is is more in shadow than the rest of, of here, uh, and so it's just enough to kind of you know give it just a little bit of a pop. Um, I would say I mean, even parts of it maybe are too dark, uh, especially like around uh, around the boots here. It it kind of fades into black a little bit. I think she may have could have used a little more fill light here. But it produces a really nice mood uh, that I, I I think just lends itself greatly to you know the 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 style of the movie and the overall tone of the movie. Um, so for the the rest of the critique, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. We usually talk about you know all these unwritten rules like the rule of thirds. Uh, you know, uh, leading lines, framing, um, which are, you know, not really so much rules as, as guidelines. Uh, and it's important to learn those guidelines when you're starting out as a photographer uh, because they, they can help you take your photography from looking fairly amateurish, amateurish to looking professional. Um, but today we're going to talk about all the rules she breaks, uh, and she breaks quite a few rules uh, in this one. Now, rule of thirds, she pretty much follows. Uh, you know, right here is probably the third of the picture, and that's where the subject is. Uh, does a pretty good job with, with that. One other rule, which I hadn't ever mentioned before, is when you have action in a photograph. Now, even though the, there's action in the photograph, even though the motion is stopped, but uh, there's definitely a sense of movement, uh, and it looks like you know that the, the figure is moving, you know, you know this way, um, and that um, typically there's a kind of an unwritten rule of that motion should go from from left to right. Um, and that's possibly because, you know, that's the way it, it looks more natural that way because that's the way, you know, we, uh, we read. Um, we, we read left to right. Now, uh, Annie Leibovitz is of Jewish descent. Um, now, she, she, whenever she talks about her, her religion, she says she's a non-practicing Jew 
uh, but she feels very Jewish. Uh, I think that's the quote that he has. Uh, and uh, you know, Jewish script goes from from right to left. Um, here, I, I think I think it works. Um, I, it doesn't seem unnatural to me. Um, I, I think you know this this motion here is great. Um, let's look at another one: the horizon lines. One of um, kind of the rules that you should have even horizon or or I guess level or horizon lines that are parallel with you know the bottom of the photograph. Uh, here, the horizon line. Uh, it's right here. It slopes downward, and it even kind of curves. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I mean, it kind of implies that the, this is the horizon line. Um, and I really love it because I, it also gives a sense of of uneasiness, of uh, almost um, a sense of being off balance, a sense of even kind of a sense of falling. Like if you take this forward motion that she has, it's kind of even going this way, you know, kind of, you know, to the, to the left and also down. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it works really, really well in this photograph. Um, another one is the, so the fact that this, the reason that the, the horizon line is, is, is curved is because she is using, uh, a wide-angle lens, and that uh, distorts distorts space when you use a really wide-angle lens, and that's another you know rule that's uh, that's broken here is that in typically in portraits, um, uh, you typically use longer lenses, uh, even telephoto lenses for portraits, uh, and in this one, and I mean this is you know not necessarily you know. Just in this photograph, she I think she uses a lot of wide angle lenses in a lot of her portraits because um, because her portraits I guess you could call them environmental portraits. Uh, well, typically, you would think of a portrait as a, as a close up, you know, of you know a figure, and so you have you know this is what typically a portrait might look like. Um, but for her portraits, it's that you know the environment is a very important part, and of course, in any kind of movie and production stills, this you know because it, the photograph is supposed to be cinematic, uh, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna want to use a wide angle so you get not only the figure but the scene as a whole. And for the last uh, rule that she you know somewhat breaks. Uh, uh, and kind of maybe a too obvious one is that uh, uh, the subject's eyes are closed. Um, now, of course, for this photograph, it it works because uh, the character is you know uh, is a, is a Jedi who is you know perhaps you know in deep meditation, calling on the Force. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, quite unusual you know to have you know a portrait like this with the, the subject's eyes closed. So, um, other things about this photograph I like. I do like the lines. Um, we have so many lines here. So, you know, we have the horizon line. Uh, let me draw that better. Horizon line here, and then another one that kind of mirrors it here. The obvious line of the lightsaber. Uh, and then her limbs just, you know, kind of point in all sorts of directions. Uh, here, here, this one kind of mirrors that one. Um, just you know, an abundance of really, really cool lines in this one uh, that I, I really, really dig. Um, and so other than that, um, and then, you know, like I said before, one the main reason I, I really wanted to do this, you know, photograph is because uh, it is one, you know, of a, of a strong female character uh who um for one is you know is 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 not you know not sexualized in any way and uh, you know no real difference between uh, you know another male character of the same type you know like another jedi character like luke or obi-wan uh 
Um, she can hang with all of them. Um, and yeah, I think it's a great, you know, a great tribute to, to this character uh, and uh, a great photograph that illustrates, uh, uh, you know, this character's role in this movie. I hope you enjoyed this episode of What Makes This Photograph Great with Annie Leibovitz. Uh, if you want any, uh, we have some great books by, uh, photo books by any Weebowitz right here. Uh, you can get these at, uh, any Fort County library. And stay tuned for next episode. We're going to be talking about a British, uh, painter and photographer, David Hockney. As always, keep shooting. <laughs>